Hey guys, Fred here at Math and Engineering. We're back. We're looking now at derivatives and we're looking at the quotient rule. So if you go back, take a look at what we've done so far in derivatives. We've done the power rule. We've done polynomial functions. We've done the product rule. So two functions multiplied by each other, both with variables of x in them. And now we're going to move on to the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, as you can see from this definition that I've written down here, is when you have two functions of x divided by each other that you want to take the derivative of. And what we've done here, okay, is I've, I've written out the, the proof. Like I talked about before, it's good to get a feel of the proof because in later calculus years, you're gonna have to look at a lot of proofs. So let's take a look at what we've written down here. So we have the quotient rule. And like I just stated, we want to find the derivative with respect to x of f of x over g of x. And that's equal to, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take the bottom function, g of x, and we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the top function. So g of x times d by dx of f of x minus, okay, and we're gonna subtract here, subtract f of x, the numerator, times the derivative of the bottom, g of x. And that's all going to be divided by the bottom term, the denominator term, squared. Simple enough, straightforward, you're gonna have to memorize that, but it shouldn't be much of a problem. Once you've done a few of these, you'll just immediately start to remember it. So let's get started on a few questions. We'll solve these, we'll solve some more in another video, and hopefully by then, this is a breeze for you. It should be. So let's start with question one. We have y is equal to x over e to the x. Pretty simple problem. We're gonna start off with something easy. So we're going to say that y prime is equal to, and let's go ahead and apply the quotient rule. We have a an x term on the top and e to the x on the bottom. So let's follow this. So we have g of x, which is on the bottom. We have the bottom function. We're gonna write that first. Just take that as is. And we're gonna multiply that by the derivative of the top. So the derivative of x is going to be one, right? And I'll write that one here, but that's, we don't need to. And for the next term, we have f of x times d by dx of g of x. So we're going to take x, and let me just put square brackets here just so we can highlight both terms so we don't get confused. So x times the derivative of g of x, the bottom. So the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. Easy enough. And that is all going to be divided by e to the x squared. Very good. All right. So if we come up here, if we can break this down a little bit. We have, let's just factor out e to the x from the top here e to the x, one minus x over e to the x squared. Okay, and well, if we want, we can just cancel these two, cancel one of those, and y prime should be equal to one minus x over e to the x. All right, so that's our first question, fairly straightforward. Like we spoke about before in earlier videos, especially in calculus, you're going to want to go ahead and simplify your answer into its, its most simple form for full marks. So that's what we've gone ahead and we've done there. We've broken it down and that's probably what you're going to be marked on. If you were to leave it, for example, in this state here, you would not get full marks. So make sure we go all the way through, canceling what we can, making it nice and simple for the marker so they can give us those full marks. Let's go to question two. Something a little trickier but we're going to you know, apply the quotient rule exactly the same as we did here. So let's get started with that. So not forgetting our notation, we have g prime of x is equal to, let's go quicker on this one. So we have the bottom function, two x plus one times the derivative of the top. Okay, so we have x squared, derivative of x squared is two x times two x, derivative of negative two is just zero. And we're going to subtract the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be two times the top of the function, x squared minus two, and that is all going to be divide, divided by two x plus one squared. All right, and if we just come up here and we finish this question over here, as you can see, we can multiply this out so we're going to be left with 
4x squared. Okay, 4x squared plus 2x. All right, and then we have minus 2x squared. All right, and then negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be 4. All right, and that is going to be all over 2x plus 1 squared. And I'm just going to bring this one down here. Sorry for the lack of space here. We have g of x, and this is just uh, this is our final answer here. We're going to simplify the top, so we have like terms here. We have 4x squared minus 2x squared. So we're going to do 2x squared plus 2x plus 4 over 2x plus 1 squared. All right. So. I mean, we could factor out a two from the top, from the numerator here. We could also expand this, but I think that that should be sufficient to get full marks if you were to leave it like that. But feel free to factor out the two if you feel like it in your test, that's cool. And you know what, just so we're not getting lost here, let's separate these questions because we're starting to blend into each other here. There we go, perfect. All right, let's work on the last one. This one's uh, much trickier but it shouldn't be too hard. Let's apply the qu quotient rule just the same. If you wanna just pause the video here and maybe attempt this one, because this one's a little bit trickier, then by all means, if not, just take a look at how we solve it. So let's start with the same method that we used to solve the other two. We're going to take g of x, which is the bottom function, and we're just gonna write that out as is. And we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the top function, which is e to the x, simple enough, minus, and this time we are going to take the derivative of the bottom and multiply it by the top as we've done before. So let's do that. We have derivative of the bottom. So one minus e to the x, derivative of one is zero. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we're left with negative e to the x because there's a negative here, right? Times e to the x, very good. And which is the top, that's f of x, right? And that's all divided by the quotient, one minus e to the x, and that is squared. All right, so what can we do, and let's just come down here. What can we do to simplify this? Well, we can expand. Let's go ahead and expand the top, because that's looking a little messy. I think we can break that down into a more simple form. So let's uh, distribute this e to the x into the bracket. We have e to the x minus, okay, so we have e to the x times e to the x. That's gonna be e to the two x, right? if we remember our exponent rules from high school math. So we have minus e to the two x, all right? And then we have minus minus e to the x times e to the x, all right? So that's gonna become a positive. Same thing, e to the x times e to the x is e to the two x. So we have e to the two x, and that is all going to be divided by one minus e to the x squared. And let's come over here and finish this question up. As we can see, we have negative e to the two x plus e to the two x, like terms. We'll go ahead and cancel those out. And we can finalize the question by writing y prime is equal to, it looks like that's as far as we're going to be able to simplify it, one minus e to the x squared. Okay. So yeah, I don't think it's getting any more simple. I don't think expanding the square is going to, uh, to help our cause at all. Just take a look, guys, at this bottom. If, if it doesn't look like if you were to expand this, you could cancel out. And as you can see, we're gonna be left with a, uh, just a constant here, so we can't cancel. So just, just evaluate it, take a look, and if you think that maybe expanding this will be able to uh, make a, a more simple final uh, solution for the professor, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, leave it like that. Thanks for watching, that's uh, quotient rule. I hope that is much more clear at this point. Let's do another few questions in the next video, really cement our knowledge in this section, and we'll, we'll move on. Thanks for watching, guys.